what I was looking for this whole time was right in front of me the whole time. <laughs> Paradise <laughs> will do that to you. Yeah. <laughs> I still do that to you. Dear Shandy. Welcome back to Dear Shandy listeners. Hello, Andy. Hello. How are you today? Doing okay. Doing okay. We have a very exciting couple today. To me, this couple is like... It comes from the, well, the Bachelor contestant in question mm -hmm. comes from, in my opinion, the golden age yes, of, uh, of Bachelor programming. Rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, rest, long behind us now. <laughs> but uh, he has gone on and is living his life and is happily married and has a baby now. And I just thought, who better than this particular former Bachelor contestant and his stunning wife to come on and just let us know how life is going. So before I introduce them, before I give away their names, even though anyone who has clicked on the episode already knows who it is, <laughs> <laughs> we're first joined by Mr. Ben Zorn, who you know from Caitlin Bristow's season of The Bachelorette. He was also on Bachelor in Paradise season four. He, I, I didn't know this until I did research on you. You were born in Vienna? I was. Vienna, Austria. That's right. Do you speak German? Yes, he has his Deutsch. Wow. <laughs> oh I need a few more drinks and then I'll break into my drinks. <laughs> Charlene, <laughs> Charlene Spreck is, Spreck is oh. decent German. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I, I, I used to talk to my grandma all the time on the phone, which made it better. Uh, but my German has gone downhill significantly. So it's not, oh. it's not great. Yeah. If there's one thing I've learned about German, it's that if you do not flex it, it really does. It's yeah. a muscle that you do not, if you don't flex the muscle, I'm tying in your oh, fashion. Nice. <laughs> nice. Smooth. That was actually really sad. Okay. <laughs> and his beautiful wife, Stacy Sentinella. Am I saying that right? What a beautiful Antelina, name. but with a little Italian that twist. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she is a dental hygienist and executive assistant correct? Yes. yes. And they are joining us from San Jose, California. Nice. We're just very excited to have you two. What a gorgeous couple you are. Thank you for joining Hi, us today. So, <laughs> so today is really meant to just be all fun, all loving. You're just going to mm -hmm. love on each other and we're going to love on you. <laughs> and it's just a good, good old time. Sound good? Sounds, Sounds good. Like plan. Yeah. <laughs> Who wouldn't have fun with that? Okay. So we're going to start at the very <laughs> beginning of your story. And I actually don't know the answer to this. How did the two of you meet? You want to take this? <laughs> so technically we met through Facebook. Um, I had reached out to him for personal training. Um, I used to do the fitness shows and I was kind of looking for a different type of workout and someone in San Jose had recommended Ben. And so I had reached out and this was, I think you had, you had filmed Bachelor. I had filmed Bachelor, but it hadn't but aired it hadn't yet. aired yet. And at the time, I was consumed, and I was in nursing school at the time, and um, just consumed. And I had no idea that he was a contestant on The Bachelor. And um, but I had reached out, and we had set up this hike to go talk about my fitness goals. And one of the girls from my nursing class was like, "How do you know Ben Zorn?" And I'm like who? Like, I don't know. Who, I don't, I don't know who you're talking about. And she showed me, she's like, this, this guy, he's on the bachelor. And I'm like, no way. <laughs> and then through that, I was like, I'm not going, he's probably going to be like, you know, this stuck up, you know, just this, you have this idea of what these people are going to be like on the mm -hmm. show. And, um, I was like, I don't want to work out with someone like that. I'm, I'm not interested. And everyone's like, just go and meet him. Cause how cool will it say, you know, how cool it'd be to say that you met Ben Zorn from the bachelor. <laughs> So, at the very honesty, least, yeah. you know, so I was like, all right, I'll take one for the team. And yeah. I go and we go on this hike and I never ended up doing training. He said he wouldn't take my money because once he takes money, it I knew, becomes... I knew pretty early on the hike. I was like, listen, I was like, this girl is pretty cool. I was like, <laughs> I could actually see myself dating this girl and I don't mix those two. So if I, if I could ever Smart. see myself dating somebody, then I'm like, listen, I'm like, I'm more than happy to give you like a free workout. I can send it to you. I can whatever. But like, I don't mix business with that stuff. I'm like, I don't even want to put that out there. So, um, so yeah, pretty early on, I kind of knew that there was something there. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I was like, I don't think we can actually train together but so did you know stacy or did yeah did just ben know <laughs> um no so the funny thing is i was head over like 
I had never met anybody like him this, through this hike. I was just in awe over him. And I always, I knew that like, I went home to my mom. I called my mom. I was like, you're not going to believe this. Like he is the most amazing person I've ever met. He is so special. And, um, you know, he, he says that he knew that there was like a thing, but he, his life was about to go from zero to a hundred. So he couldn't allow himself to go there. But me, I'm like, oh, he's the best thing ever. Like I want all of you, you know? Yeah. So. She, she always said she knew since day one. And for me, I think for me, I knew that, that we always had a connection from day one, but at the same time, I mean, you don't know how your life's going to change. You know, once you, once this sure. reality show airs, they, I mean, I was, I always had this fear that I was going to go on the <laughs> show and they were going to make me look like the villain <laughs> and all, all this stuff. And of course, <laughs> nothing even close to that happened, but I had these, you know, expectations and I didn't know what they were going to portray me as. I didn't know what was going to happen. And so I was like, I don't know where we're going to go from here, but um, I told her I was, I, I, I got to be completely honest with you. Um, I'm going to be out there and be open for anything and see what happens and who knows what's going to come from it. And she was on board for that. And kind of, we, we kept in touch over the years. Um, but it wasn't until I actually got back from paradise that I realized that what I was looking for this whole time was right in front of me the whole time. <laughs> you know, I do think it is. Paradise important. will do that to you. Yeah. Paradise <laughs> will do that to me. <laughs> You know, I, I, okay. First of all, this is a very cute story. I have a few more questions about like, how specific were you? Were you like, I can't take your money because I'm interested in you romantically or like, like, how did you verbalize that? Cause she's probably like, Hey, I want to work out with you. God, it was so long ago. Um, it was I think it more just kind of died off. Cause I think it, I mean, at least how I remember it, I feel I feel like we both just kind of had this unspoken, like, wow, this seems kind of cool. And the whole working out thing kind of faded. Cause keep in mind that like this hike that we went on, it was supposed to be maybe like half an hour, 45 minutes. We were together for almost six hours. It turned yeah. into like this oh, wow. extravagant, like. I, I, it was something I used to do with a lot of my clients, my first time clients. It was um, something that would, for me, be like, it would, it would, it would be a judge on how committed these people were to actually working out or oh. if they wanted to say they had a personal trainer. And so I would mm. always say to myself, if, if they could make it around this hike, one, show up and two, make it around the hike, then I would get a great idea for what kind of motivation they had, if they were committed and things like that. Yeah. And usually it was about an hour and with her, it turned into six hours. <laughs> if they last six hours, you marry them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm curious, what were your first impressions of each other on that first, that first hike date, the six hour hike date of legend? And how have those changed since then, if at all? That's a good go question. I be specific. We love yeah, specificity. She, she has the memory of an elephant, so she'll remember everything about what she felt on that day. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I have no idea what she looked like on that day, but I remember she looked good. <laughs> um, but, um, no, I, I, I remember thinking that, um, especially after that first meeting, I remember um, she was telling me that she had her her brain tumor that that day as well, um, which was the first time I'd ever met her. And I remember thinking to myself how resilient this girl was to be able to go through all that and how strong she must be to be able to go through all that on top of the fact of being in nursing school and then um, and also just going through the whole bikini competition. She had already done two bikini competitions at that time as well. And so I thought, wow, this girl is ridiculously well-rounded. She's smart. She's funny. She has been through like hard times in her life. And I really think that like, when you encounter people that have been through hard times and they come out the other end as good as the way they are, um, I think it says a lot about the person. And so I think that that was the thing that really stuck out to me, um, how well-rounded she was and how many things um, she had been through that came and she came out the other end looking great. Oh. <laughs> and those things are still true today. I mean, the things that she's been through in the past, obviously before that, you know, they have change the person she is today, but it's in, a, in the better, it's made her stronger and resilient. And it shows through every day with, you know, with our son, Logan, like watching her be a mom is one of the coolest things ever. Mm. Okay. okay <laughs> he's, no, he's, he's, a little, well, he's a little too good at this. Too good, yeah. <laughs> Stacy, before I want to put a pin in that, before you answer about Ben, can I ask a bit about, cause I actually didn't know about the, the brain tumor thing, mm -hmm. but yeah. Do you mind? Yeah, no, not at all. Um, so it's, I mean, it's really, it's actually a really cool story. If you can get past the fact of it being a brain tumor, um, it's actually a really common brain tumor. It was on my pituitary gland and I discovered it 
gosh, 2011, I thought I just needed glasses and I went in to go get my eyes checked. And the doctor was like, your eyes look fine, but what you're describing is, you know, just a little funky. So referred me out to an ophthalmologist. I had an MRI done um, and actually had peripheral blindness. And um, the MRI showed that I had a brain tumor that was just growing. It was about the size of a golf ball and it was just growing perfectly in between my eyes. So it was pressing on my optic nerves and causing blindness. And so it wasn't it wasn't a immediate getting, you know, we need surgery right now. I ended up finishing um, my prereqs that my prereqs for um, I'm getting off topic, but I did nursing school and then I went into hygiene school. So just so you don't get confused. <laughs> no. So at this time I was in my prereqs for dental hygiene. And so I finished out that I had the surgery and um, from the brain tumor, I have what is called acromegaly. So this is, this is where I think it gets really cool. And a lot of people will be like, that's weird. But um, do you guys know Andre the Giant? From yes. yeah. Okay, so Andre the Giant, you know, he's this giant, right? Yeah. So Andre the Giant is a giant who had um, what we, what they call, um, gosh, I haven't thought of these terms in so long. So acromegaly and gigantism. So gigantism is when you are diagnosed before your bones have fused together. So you grow to be a giant like Andre the Giant. Um, acromegaly is what you have after your bones have already fused together. So you've gone through puberty, you've gone through all of those changes, and then you're diagnosed with this and you basically grow kind of, it sounds weird, but all more your, wide, all um, your soft, features get larger. Yes. Yeah, so like soft tissue features, things like that, um, will expand. And so prior to having my surgery, I, if you see pictures of me, it's, I, I look like a cousin or it's ridiculous in a matter of like, I don't, know, I don't know how long it was, but maybe two years or a year. How no, I, before I was in the hospital for about five days with this and after the surgery and my features just went right she, back to normal. I she, just, she looked like a different wow. person. It's, yeah. It's wow. unreal. It, it was really wow. wild. I was never there for it, but she showed me pictures and like, I would never, you, even now, if she, if we went back there and she, I saw her walking down the street, I wouldn't recognize her. Wow. It was weird. So, so you let me understand this. You looked different. Like if someone saw you, they wouldn't be like, oh, she looks strange. Something's wrong. You just look like a different person. I would say more, I would say more strange. Like, oh, like, okay. like swollen, like really swollen, I guess is the okay. right. Like, like if your whole face got stung by bees. Oh, like, wow. well, no, not that's exactly. <laughs> it went too far. I'm exaggerating a little bit. So far. like, I like eyelids were swollen, nose swollen, um, puffy, kind of like I couldn't wear rings that I used to be able to wear, um, things like that, but it's a very slow progressing disease. So I got really lucky because a lot of majority of the people that are diagnosed with this, um, because it's so, it's so slow, um, by the time they diagnose it, it's just too late and it takes over your heart and organs and things like that. And you basically just kind of die slowly from it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was so fortunate that things kind of just played out where they caught it in time and everything shrunk back. And I, it's something that you always live with, but they're able to control it. Wow. I got so lucky. I live a completely normal life. There's nothing, there's nothing off limits. Um, if you like my doctor, I remember told me if I had to have a brain tumor, this is the brain tumor I want to have. So um, and that's, it, it's totally true. So <laughs> number one brain tumor. <laughs> yeah. Number one brain tumor. <laughs> so yeah. Especially since it is a happy ending. What a, that is a cool story. I mean, that's it's insane. Wild. Yeah. yeah and so, I mean, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely a weird story, but there's no, there's nothing that holds me back. I have, I'm so lucky, you know, I can't sit here and play a poor me card or anything like that. It's I'm so fortunate and lucky. So and that you got it at the stage of your life that you did. Yeah. Right after, right after you start stopped growing, basically. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And wow. how's your eyesight now? Well, besides old age taking over. Um, <laughs> you can't eyesight, blame it on the tumor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My eyesight is, was totally fine afterwards. Wow. So, yeah. OK. Sorry, I had to pounce on that because you said that in passing, Ben, and I was just very curious. Yeah, that's definitely the best brain tumor story I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty Seriously, cool. yeah. Okay, so back on track, Stacy. you meet Ben on the, the six-hour hike of legend. And what are your first impressions, and then how have those changed? I think for, when I first, I mean, of course, he's so handsome. Can't Wait, get first, I, I need to get, hold on a second. I need to get some like specs on you. How tall are you? Because on the bachelor, 
<laughs> like short people are like six three. So what what, yeah. what what do you got? What are you packing away there? Well, I'm six three. I'm oh, you're six three. three. Oh, so you're short. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, I mean, as far as bachelor status, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm you're, a, you're a little guy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just wanted to get it out of the way. Go ahead. <laughs> so yeah. Um, I mean, he's handsome, obviously, no hiding that. He's just so he's so he's such an honest, kind old soul is like basically the way I can describe it. He's just sweet. You don't get any, there's no, he's not conceited. He's not, he doesn't have a big head. He's just so down to earth and kind. And I think that was what, you know, you think of these guys who are so good looking Mm. to have this, you know, big head and, you know, it's just, it, he probably gets all these girls and he's this and he's that, but it's not at all like that. He's just such a kind person. And I think, you know, we had this friendship for about two years before dating and and to see him, I think the best thing for me was to see him go through that whole process of bachelor and the ups and downs and to see how true he was to himself and how he remained who he was and didn't let the bright lights and attention take over. And he just, I think, as the whole process went forward, my awe for him just continued to blossom. And, you know, it just, it still continues to this day in so many different ways. So that's very sweet. Yeah. It's so cute. I got to give some credit to Vienna though. Oh my God. I knew you were going to say that. I really do. I think how, how many years were you in Vienna before you moved here? I think I was there for one year, but, um, so I was born there and my family was all from there. So I was only there for a year and then my dad got a job over here. So we moved out here, but up until 14, I would pretty much spend every other summer, the entire summer I would spend out in Vienna Mm. and And all all my family was out there. And are your parents from Vienna? Yeah. Both of them born and raised in Vienna. There is, there's something something there. there. We we were convinced. I mean, no offense. We're not, we're not, not giving you credit. Yeah, You're not, you get credit. It's just, you know, people's lives have a lot of factors. In yeah. It. I, I agree with you because, yeah. cause Stacy, I agree with you in that a lot of guys that, you know, go on the bachelor, especially, you know, the kind of guy that is into physical fitness and wellness and, you know, six, three, like, like look at him. And it's just more likely than not that he would be exactly what you had right. assumed he might be. And again, <laughs> just to say, <laughs> I've heard all these it's just a generalization, yeah. but I do agree. Like sometimes we'll meet someone. Do you know who, you know, uh, Kevin went. Yeah. 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 So he's another example of someone who like, we think if he were American, that he would be different. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. But because he's Canadian, he's a little different. And I, I, I agree with you. Yeah, I think the cultural exposure really helps, especially early on. Yeah. It has to help. I agree. Even though I was I was born there and then raised over here, um, I mean my my cult, my family growing up was very very Austrian. Like mm-hmm. you know, my my mom learned learned English when she came over, and my dad he knew he spoke English, but it was you know broken English and stuff. And so there was a lot of that where growing up in that culture still was very apparent. Would you call German your first language? I know now it's faded, but and years ago, probably, but, okay. um, but I mean, it honestly, it's, it's faded so much. I don't ever speak it anymore. You know, I used to speak it all the time, um, yeah. to my grandma and when I went over to, 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 to Austria and to my mom and all that stuff. And then ever since my mom passed away, I, we don't speak it at the house and then I don't speak it anymore because my grandma passed away too. So, mm. um, all my, I don't want to say all my connections to Austria are gone, but all the people that I would normally speak <clears> to in German, are I, I are, aren't here anymore so mm. that's too bad yeah that is yeah, yeah. i definitely surprised. we are we are currently planning a family trip back to austria next summer so we're trying to figure it out we want to get back there i got some time to to brush, to up, on brush up on my journey <laughs> okay, good how, yeah, you how's your uh, schwarzenegger impression no terrible. you don't want <laughs> no, no it's good. Awful. Right. it's awful <laughs> right, i'll let you off the hook <laughs> Okay. So I want to know then, you know, you've been together, let's see, according to my notes. So you proposed in 2019, right, Ben? Mm-hmm. And you dated two years. So you met in 2017? Approximately. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, we met in 2015. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, You're right. We met in 2015. We were Start friends. dating. And then he's um, friends. And then we started officially dating after Paradise in 2017. 
There you go. Before I get to my next question, how, Ben, did you open that back up again? Like, did you write her on Facebook? Like, how, or did you text her after you got back from so we had So, yeah, so we had stayed friends throughout this whole thing. And I think when I got back from Paradise, I think she was actually getting ready to potentially move to L.A., and I, t- I told her, I was like, hey, listen, I just got off the show. And I, w- I think it had been about a month maybe after I got back. Let me tell the story. Yeah, you probably know that. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> so I've been there. He, like he said, we remained friends. Um, and prior to him going on Paradise, we were really close friends. So he had to break that news to me. Um, and at that point, you know, we are, this was two years down the road of me waiting, kind of, I guess you could say. Um, openly, openly waiting. Like he knew, know. he 100% knew how I feel, how yeah. I felt, sorry. Um, and I made that very evident. Like I said, you know, I think you're the most amazing person. You know, if, if and when your heart ever changes and you feel like this is something, you know where to find me kind of thing. Um, and we remained friends. And then he had to break the news of paradise to me, which was probably the worst day of my life <laughs> um he ben he, don't worry no one meets shattered. anybody on paradise so I, <laughs> so I say things like you know he shattered my heart and that kind of stuff but honestly we had to go through everything in order to have the amazing relationship that we have now it really did make things stronger um but he left to paradise and i told him i'm like if you come back i was like even if you come back with somebody i don't care like this, what we have, isn't something normal. Like, you know, and I know that you still need to figure that out, but, you know, go and figure it out. And, you know, but when you come back, if you think that this is it, then like, you know, kind of where, you know, where to find me. Mm. And I just, but I did everything in my power while he was gone to move on, change my life around, uh, not change my life around, but change my routine. Cause we lived really close to each other. So we'd run into each other a lot. So I didn't want him to know anything about me. I deleted my Instagram. I, you know, I didn't want him to, I wanted to come back and be non-existent. Right. And so yeah. it worked. It worked. It literally worked. <laughs> goes for the gold. Ghost, Andy. Yeah. It really worked. I, you know, I didn't let him know anything about me. He would text me. I'd ignore it. Um, well played. You know, just, I played the she game played, she, hard. She played it good. I played yeah. it perfectly and it paid off. You made and him finally, realize what and he finally, was missing. Yeah, he finally texted me and was like, would you want to go get frozen yogurt and check and, you know, just kind of catch up? And I was like, look, you know where I stand. Unless you are in it, Mm. then no, I don't want to go just hang out again. Yeah, she was pretty firm on that. But at at that point, I think at that point, I knew I'm not just going on a date at, you know, to get Froyo. Like I knew that if I was going to go for this, that it would be all in. I wasn't going to like I knew at this point it was either all or nothing. And I was prepared for that. Okay, I have a somewhat personal question. In those two years between 2015 and 2017, be honest, do yeah. you hook up at all? Are there any kisses, any like hookups? Did we hook up, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just I felt like we were missing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, both of us, I mean, we, we, I don't want to say we dated other people, we went on dates. Like mm-hmm. it was kind of, it was very open. Yeah, we, yeah, but somehow we always found our way back to each other, you yeah. know, and mm-hmm. there was never really, a long period of time where we weren't talking maybe, you know, weeks or something, but nothing, yeah. nothing crazy. We, we were always in touch, whether it was, Hey, do you want to go do it? Like we did remember that photo shoot for the leggings. It was, yeah. you know, there's always something that would bring us together in some weird way. Yeah. Um, whether I was dating someone or he was dating someone or whatever, we always had some type of contact, which was great, but it was always, it was always Ben. I would date these other guys and it was always Ben. I would, you know, not to sound like a bad person or anything, but <laughs> like, you know, these other guys were just kind of like, Hey, like, you know, I'll keep you side off pieces. Until, you know, <laughs> yes. Yeah, side pieces. Exactly. Like it, if he texts me, like I like, bye, I don't care. You know, like it was always Ben for me. So you know? in your, in your heart of hearts, did you believe that he was going to come back from paradise without a girlfriend? Um, I didn't know if he would come back with somebody, but I actually don't remember. Did he come back with somebody? I don't remember what happened. I, we don't. Could you recap us on your season? <laughs> so it, was, it was very uh, unforgettable or very forgettable from that standpoint. Okay. I didn't really I didn't go on any dates at all the entire time I was in paradise. Oh, um, I remember this. And I remember being like, why isn't anyone going for Ben Z? Because of Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> and so we and so I go through the whole show and I think there was there was three or four days left of filming. 
And I was just kind of over it. And I was kind of, I was ready to head home. You missed your dog, didn't you? That's, this was, see, this uh, is, this I, it's coming insider. back to nice. me. I know. Nice. This is the insider stuff. So, I mean, <laughs> they, uh, I told them, I was like, I'm, I'm planning on going home. I was just going to take off, you know, before the rose ceremony, this and that. And I asked him, I was like, do they have anybody else that's coming in that I might be interested in? And um, they told me he was coming in. And I was like, well, not really interested in anybody. Um, so I'm just going to see my way out. And so I said my goodbyes to everybody. And uh, you can tell in those interviews when they're trying to push something. And at the time, I had a, I had a puppy. I, just, I had just gotten my dog, Zeus. And I think he was six months old at the time. And of course they were pushing that. Do you miss your dog? You know, yeah, yeah. I didn't see him <laughs> things like that. Mm-hmm. And so it ended up turning into me leaving because of my dog, which yeah. of course, it if you don't have anything, if they don't have anything bad to say about you, they'll find something funny to say yeah. about you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So yeah. I was like, you know what? There's That's worse true. things. So I, I'll, oh, yeah. I'll do that. Yeah, yeah. You came off looking great. It's like, Oh, a man loves his dog. Yeah. So. yeah puppy. <laughs> yeah. Who doesn't like that. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, okay. So before we move on, I swear, like I have, we have more relationship questions. So did, before, sorry, yeah. just to wrap that, but this one. Yeah, well, I go, know, go, go. I'm such a super fan, but um, <laughs> did you feel in some way relieved at the end of the season that you had a, a clear runway to Stacy, or was that not really how you were thinking about so the exit? I, I can't say that I left paradise for Stacy. Right. Um, I know that I have, I know that I talked to, buddies of mine on the show about people we had dated in the past and what we were looking for and things like that. And in the process of talking about those things in my mind, I always came back to Stacy. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not that I left specifically for her, but I guess I, I left paradise knowing that there was somebody else that there were, that there were people out there that I had better connections with than anybody on that I had found on a show. Right. And I was willing to explore those options. And, and I think within a week or two of coming off the show, I was like, well, everything that I keep thinking of that I want is her. Mm. And so that's why I decided to ask her out on another Froyo date. Okay. I Okay. First of all, good call on Froyo because, mm, that, yeah. <laughs> but I swear I want to move on from this, but I think one of the reasons why we're hovering on this so much is that I actually think this represents a lot of dating scenarios today. This sort yeah. of like, you know, you're kind of circling each other there. You are hooking up, but you're both dating other people. And there's like, Stacy, you're, you're being very clear in what you want, but he's, you know, he's still kind of like, not sure. I want to hear from each of you. Do you think that Ben, you would have come back to Stacy in the way you did, had she not sort of cut you out? Had she not sort of deleted her Instagram and stopped responding and just sort of ghosted for the gold, mm-hmm. as we say I, here? I, I I don't know, to be honest. I yeah. don't know. I, I honestly think that where my mind was at at the time I came back off Paradise, I think that even if she had started talking to me again, I think I still would have pursued it. Mm. Um, I, I can't I can't say just... that for a fact. I mean, she she I think I, she, so. I think she <laughs> believes that. It worked. Um, I think more so than anything, it was it was me being on paradise and and you know this having so much time without your phone without your tv without anything to genuinely think about what is important to you in someone mm-hmm. and in your life yeah and, to find yourself to find yourself <laughs> yeah i think i think that was the biggest reason when when i came off i was i had a lot more clarity yeah and stacy how about you i just want i'm curious do you think that had you not played it in that way I, I, the reason I, like I said, I'm hovering on this a lot just because I think, I actually think you played it right. Mm. And I'm just curious if you think that was like a good chess move here. I mean, I would like to say I, per- I played a perfect chess game, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I have a feeling that, you know, maybe further down the road, we would have made it official type of thing. Yeah. Um, but I think, I think coming back and not being at his disposal. Cause I, you know, I did make myself available mm. and I, you know, if he wanted to hang out, I dropped everything, you know, I yeah. did do all those things, you know? And so when I came, when he came back and I wasn't just there to hang out with on a Tuesday night, you know, it was kind of like, well, dang, you know, I kind of missed this person. Mm. And when, you know, I really, I think when I stood strong on what I, I knew at that point, it was, kind of a fork in the road, either we do this or we don't. And I was already at that fork. So I think when he realized how serious I was and how 
quickly he could lose everything that we had. I, I mean, obviously I can't speak for him, but you know, maybe it made him think a little bit more about, well, you know, dang, I don't want this, you know, how much there is to lose. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. definitely. Exactly. You realize it when you're faced with the possibility of actually losing. Right. I love them most when they're walking out the door. (laughs) 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 Okay. Wait, wait, wait. I still have more bachelor questions. (laughs) I, ha- I have to ask this question every time we have a common civilian who <laughs> hooks up with a bachelor person. Yeah. yeah. Um, common a rank and file civilian. Yeah. <laughs> Says the rank and file civilian. Yes. <laughs> so, did you watch his season, uh, And if so, what do you think? How I'm trying to remember. Gosh, when we were when you were on the Bachelorette, I watched I watched both seasons. I did watch both seasons. Okay. Um, when we were on the back when he was on Bachelorette. Um, I think we were, well, we were we, friends, we didn't watch together. but we didn't watch together. Okay. And I knew that he had, he had told me, he's like, I have a kissing scene with Caitlin. I'm like, Ugh, <laughs> okay. Um, and so obviously I avoided that scene or that episode. Um, but I watched everything else and I, I don't remember, I, I don't remember who I watched with or whatnot, but for paradise, we were already together by the time it aired. So, um, that's what I want to know. I want to hear about that. (laughs) Although we didn't do anything. So it's not that interesting. I I couldn't get mad at him for anything. (laughs) But, um, but no, so we did watch paradise together. Um, but like I said, it was very uneventful for him. So so. what did you, was it weird for you or did you, was it cool or what was the, what do you feel about it? Honestly, I think because I was kind of there from the start of everything, it was, it, it was, it didn't really seem weird. Cause I'll even have friends say now to me, Oh, isn't it weird? Like you're dating. And I'm like, no, it's not weird. It's just, it's the normal, you know, it's right. there's nothing weird about it anymore. It's, it's just is what it is. And by the way, just to close that out, if he had to kiss one person from Bachelor Nation, Caitlin is top notch. Oh yeah. So I feel like pretty awesome. awesome. Yeah. yeah. And she's met Caitlin since. So yeah. Oh. Good. <laughs> she's great. So, she's so exactly. yeah, she's awesome. I agree with that. Yeah. yeah. High notch. quality. Okay. I swear now okay, we're getting done. back to your relationship. <laughs> <laughs> How would you two say you compliment each other? Oh, that's easy. That's easy. We are, we're very yin and yang. We're total opposites. Stacy is a roller coaster <laughs> and I am a, uh, very, a like, rail car, uh, just a regular a rail, rail car, like a, exactly. A trolley. Yeah. Okay. I never get. Too high. <laughs> <laughs> I never get too high on the highs. I never get too low on the lows. Um, one of my football coaches always told me that you, you, you're never as good as you think you are, and you're never as bad as you think you are. And I've mm. very much taken that to heart. And so um, I've always stayed very even keel. And she is definitely the excitement of. You get the spice ridiculously excited about things to a level I don't even experience. <laughs> and then also the opposite of, you know, very sad about things. And so yeah. said, definitely said every, every Austrian who's dated an American girl. <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably. Yeah. So we are definitely opposites in every way. Very oh, so you would answer the exact same way, Stacey. hundred percent. Okay. All right. Yeah. Easy. I think one. that's part of the reason, like we, we balance each other out very so, well. Yeah. I, I kind of bring him out and he kind of, you know, Hey, like maybe we should not go cuss out this person. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so it's, yeah, it's a good balance. Oh, that's, nice. a, that's a cute answer. I mean, I love how on the same page you were about yeah, that. Cause sometimes they both knew the answer. Right yeah. Away. Sometimes couples are a little like, yeah. they're like, hmm. so what was an early hurdle in your relationship and how did you overcome it? That's a good question. Oh, God. I know. <laughs> what? I know. She knows. Go first, Stacey. Yeah. Go first. Go ahead. Yeah. No permission needed. Go ahead. So I would say a really big hurdle. He's going to get embarrassed. I already know. Oh, he's um, already blushing. <laughs> I think he knows. Um, but it was stagecoach. Yeah. So oh, I. No. Oh, no. No stagecoach. Stage <laughs> um, this was pre-Blake. So this is before. Yeah, this was pre. Um, I went down there with one of my buddies. And we had, how long have we been together at the time? So we were living together. And so I would say About probably a like a year and a half. Yeah, a year, okay. year and a half. And I went down there and it was me and my buddy. And we were just having a good time at Stagecoach. And um, I danced with somebody, um, nothing in particular. 
I just swung, I was swing dancing and then I was definitely doing some probably too close dancing um, uh-huh. as well. And, and that was it. There was no kissing. There was no anything, but I was dancing, dancing a little bit too intimately with but another person. This okay. Is, this is where it begins. Um, so obviously, you know, being in the spotlight, people, you know, they know your life story. Yeah. Get the popcorn. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, so people know your story and, you know, those types of things. So someone had sent me a picture of this. Oh, on man. Oh, no. and, wow. And um, so, of course, the first picture was it was just the back of him and you could see that someone was in the front. And I was like, okay, you know, this could be anything, right? And I asked him and he was like, I don't know, you know, kind of brushed it off. And I was like, okay. And then like a couple months later, someone else sent like a ton of pictures. And I was able to see this clear picture of, you know, the hand holding and like these things that just weren't okay in my book at all. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been cheated on before. It is my, you know, not he didn't cheat, but, you know, there was definitely things that I wasn't comfortable with, right? Right. And so that's like my hard, you know, this is done type of thing. And um, so I saw these pictures and I asked him and he just kind of denied it. I think he was, he says he was trying to protect, he was, he didn't know how to handle the situation. He was scared. He was, you know, didn't know how, what was going to unfold. Um, and so that was a really hard hurdle for us to overcome just because I've had really sh- crappy relationships and I've had a bunch of baggage from that. And so trying to, not only understand why this was not okay, um, but understand like my emotions and what I'm okay with. And obviously I'm not okay with that, but I don't know. It was a really hard, it was a difficult time. It was definitely hard for sure. I mean, in in my mind, I just thought I was going down and my thought was I didn't kiss anybody. I I didn't cheat. I didn't do anything. Right. I didn't think anything was wrong, Mm -hmm. but you know, especially what I've learned now is that sometimes that can be even worse if it's like emotional in that sense, oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it was an intimate moment, mm-hmm. and it doesn't matter if that I didn't kiss that person. It was it was intimate with somebody that I shouldn't have been intimate with, and yeah, at the time, like again, I just thought I was having a good time. I was dancing with somebody at a country concert, you know. Yeah. Just in hindsight, of course, I should have just <laughs> kept it myself. Yeah. Or do you think also owned up to it? Because I can actually understand yeah. why you're you would deny it in a but I know how inconsequential it is kind of way. Yeah. And so I think maybe I guess what you learned is that she would rather just know the truth. Sure. And no matter I how will- inconsequential. I have learned that over the years as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I think. Um, yeah, maybe it was something that shouldn't have happened. But I think what ultimately made the situation worse was Mm -hmm. him continuously saying like it was nothing it was nothing Mm -hmm. and kind of you know either Mm -hmm. I don't want to say playing it down but just yeah I mean in a sense kind of lying right Mm -hmm. and to me that is I, I don't put up with that and I'm sure most people don't either um so that was a big hurdle for us to overcome and for him to understand why even if it's going to upset me in that moment Long term, if you want this to last, then you have to be up front with me. And I have to know that you will always tell me the truth, no matter what, even if it's something that will cause a fight, a hard fight in that moment, you know. So how long then did it take, Ben, for you to earn Stacey's trust back after that? Like, was that just a matter of time? I think it was just a matter of time. I don't know if there was a specific time where everything was just great and all of a sudden everything was forgotten. I think mm-hmm. it's that, yeah. I, well, so I was going to say, I think, cause how I mentioned earlier, seeing Ben through this whole process of bachelor, when things like this arise, not that anything like this has arised since, but you know, when little things in our relationship arise, I can a hundred percent say, I know Ben, I know the person that he is. Um, should he have not lied? Yes. Should he have not danced with that person? Yes. But I know him. I know him to the core. And I know that that isn't the type of person that he is. You know, he never does anything malicious. He never, he's not, he doesn't have a mean bone in his body. So Mm. because I was able to watch him through such a wild time in his life and see all the deepest, darkest times and the great times and how he handled himself and who he really was. I think that that was why for me, I was able to just, obviously it took time, but, um, for me to not just walk away, 
because mm. I knew who he was and I knew that that wasn't who he was. And I mean, let's be honest, to keep girls off a guy like Ben Zorn at stagecoach, he needs like a battle axe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Come on. <laughs> yeah, man. So. You know, I really appreciate that early hurdle. You yeah. guys are the first couple we've had to have an early hurdle of that kind of category, I would say. Yeah. And I think it's really, 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 really relatable and <sighs> common. Mm -hmm. And I mean, when one of them, one of you is like, you know, from a franchise and is getting sure. recognized all the time, especially at Stagecoach, mm -hmm. you know, I, <laughs> I actually think that that's a very relatable early hurdle. Oh, yeah. for sure. I for sure. appreciated that a lot. Okay, Andy, your favorite question. Yes. Yeah, speaking of which, nice segue. How do you guys fight and resolve conflict? Yeah. We want to hear how the fight plays out from beginning to yeah. end. Yeah. And who says sorry first yeah. on average? <laughs> I think I usually say sorry first. Um, how does the fight usually play out? We, I would say that we actually fight really well. <laughs> um, That's good. Because, I mean, nothing happens when you escalate and you have these loud yelling voices. We don't yell at each other. We, we never name call. We, we never, don't name call. We, we don't cross we, like, lines we like that. We definitely get frustrated and have obviously serious arguments and stuff like that, but we don't call each other names. And I think in those moments of frustration, I think I know that she kind of gets eyes glazed over and like, I need my time. Just need like she did like, no matter what I do, nothing's going to fix the situation. Mm -hmm. And it took me time to like get to that point where I realized that, Hey, in this moment right now, nothing is going to get, nothing's going to get fixed. And she's going to need, she just needs time to like, like let everything kind of settle settle mm -hmm. because he he's the type of person i want to fix it wants, right yeah, away he wants to yeah. come in and fix it and be done and i'm like i know i need my time i'm angry um, I'm, a, I'm a solution guy i'm like there's a problem here's a oh solution. i i completely agree You're the same. i learned this the hard way but i mean yeah. so i think of a fight with my wife now is like putting a turkey in the oven <laughs> like you may you may be hungry but you don't want to take that thing exactly out of exactly yeah, you just gotta, let you it gotta, cook you got to let it cook for a little bit and then yeah. come back to it later. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's I mean, I think that we have a very healthy way of fighting. You know, it's not we don't step bound. We don't overstep boundaries. And um, we are able we are always able to come to a solution. We are always able to put it put the fight and the emotion down and then pick up and resolve what the actual issue was and then Ooh, move forward. Very That's nice. advanced level. Yeah, advanced. <laughs> you end up actually resolving what it was instead of, right. you know, sometimes right. you just get over the fight, but you don't actually get to the root of the problem. Yeah. So you I even always, compartmentalize the emotion and then you're like, all right, let's talk about the thing we were fighting about. Exactly. Yeah. I exactly. always, for the longest time, I always told myself that, you know, the person that I end up with, I never want to go to sleep angry at that person. I never yeah. want to do that. And then I realized that, Sometimes you can, and you wake up. <laughs> yeah, you can do it. Sometimes you wake up the next yeah, day and it'll survive. Be so much better. And I totally but you have to sleep agree. with one eye open. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes it's actually a gift to give someone the right to go to bed angry. It's it like is. it's like a, it's a prize. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I actually think it's sometimes a shortcut. Yeah. Because it, you could yeah. fight for another three hours when you're both yeah. exactly. really bleary eyed and tired. Exactly. And you're kind of more emotional at night yeah. anyway. And some like while it's frustrating in the moment, like when you pass out so easily. In the oh, my fight, God. Don't even get me started on the yeah. fights make me tired. I just get <laughs> sleepy during. <laughs> I, I just I feel this rage and it lasts for about half an hour. This rage yeah. that you're just like, like you look like a baby. You look so happy sleeping. I'm like, what? oh, I am. Believe me. And next day, you know, it's like, I always, I never know when I wake up the next day, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> tread lightly. Yeah. I'm a morning yeah. person. So usually, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the roosters are cawing and <laughs> everything's better. Okay. Wait. So, so Ben says, sorry first, but he knows yeah. to wait now. And Stacy, do you like when something, I'm curious how like the fight starts, like who, do you get angry at each other the same amount? Like how, I'm just curious. I would say it's usually her getting mad at me for something that I did or didn't do. Okay. <laughs> that is, yep. She nods. Pretty, like, pretty, pretty standard. I don't know if he, I ever so, get mad at her. For, yeah, we have actually gotten the trolley. I get mad at him for not getting mad at me or I'll get mad at him for not <laughs> arguing with me. And yeah, I'm like. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's a healthy no. relationship. No, I really don't want it the other this. way around. Yeah. The man should not be getting angry. <laughs> 
as someone I'm will very, take I'm issue a real with traditionalist. Yeah, someone's going to be offended. <laughs> yeah, many people. Okay, so on to, I think, happier topics than fighting. Although it sounds like you guys have a great fighting style. Definitely approved. Stamp <laughs> yeah. of approval here. You have your adorable son, Logan, who I believe will be two in February, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. he's very cute. I want to know how has, you know, becoming parents changed your relationship, if you've mm -hmm. learned anything new about each other. And Stacy, if you're open to talking about it, you mentioned uh, on social media before about you struggled with postpartum depression. Like, I just mm -hmm. I'm curious to know how you guys navigated that together. It definitely, I would say having a kid really tests your relationship, mm -hmm. um, for mm -hmm. sure. I mean, having Logan, Lo I always say, you know, they always have that saying where God only gives you what you can handle. Mm -hmm. He gave us this amazing, perfect kid. <laughs> I was the one, like, I could not handle anything more than what Logan is. He is just such a great kid. Um, so taking Logan out of the picture, I feel like because he was such a good kid, he wasn't the root of any of our issues. It was more for me, um, you know, my hormones and um, just trying to adjust to this life. I, so that, um, you know, rewind a little bit. I didn't want to have kids actually. Um, I was told early on that I wouldn't be able to have kids and, really? um, yeah. And so I had written off that a long time ago. I was brain tumor. No. Well, so I think my numbers with the brain tumor had thrown things off, but I was also, um, diagnosed with, um, the ovarian, low ovarian, function. low ovarian function. And, mm -hmm. you know, and so, they had told me if it happens, it would be kind of like a miracle kind of thing. I would probably need help. And, you know, so I just, that wasn't, um, that wasn't something I really wanted to struggle with. I've always struggled with anxiety. And so the thought of having to go through that emotion of failure, possibly, mm -hmm. I didn't want to do it. So right. I had just always written that off. So, so you didn't, it not, not necessarily didn't want to have kids. You just understood that you probably couldn't have kids. Yeah. And I think that kind of as like a defense mechanism, it was like, I don't want kids. Got yeah. it. Yep. So I guess, how has it changed our relationship? Oh, no, but I, oh, no, oh. sorry. Cause I want, I don't want to miss a beat of that because okay. I'm very interested in the fact that you just said that you didn't think you wanted kids. And then you find out you're pre like you're, you find out you're pregnant. The reason why I'm focusing on this so much is that I actually think it's kind of a faux pas. No, of course, less now than it has been in the past, but it's sort mm -hmm. of a faux pas to say you don't want kids or whatever, for whatever right. reason. And so you are faced with this. Like, what is your, what's your thought process in initially? So I had just always written it off, um, you know, from my mid twenties. Um, yeah. and I was just totally fine with it. I didn't obviously, you know, I didn't have a guy in my life at that time or anything like that. But when I met Ben, he wanted kids. And I think for me, it, I, you know, I told him early on, look, I was told I can't have kids. And for Ben, it was, you know, he was, he wasn't going to leave me because of that. It was, we navigate and we find, you know, maybe adoption, maybe a surrogate, you know, something, you know, there, there are other ways. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I felt it gave me kind of the confidence to kind of venture into that and see maybe if in fact it could happen. Um, and so, I had my numbers checked and they were the same. And that was actually when I found out that I had the ovarian, the low ovarian function. Um, and so I don't know, we just kind of, he looked at me and wanted a baby and our wedding got pushed back. And so we, <laughs> I kind of, you know, in my head, I just was entertaining the idea. I never thought I would get pregnant. I didn't, I never felt it in my soul that I would be a mom, that I would have a baby, that I would be pregnant. I couldn't picture it, nothing. Wow. Um, and for me, it was, it was definitely one of my non-negotiables. Like I, I wanted to be a dad for sure. I wanted to have a family and that was uh, something that was extremely important to me. Yeah. And so that put a lot of pressure on me too, right? Yeah. And on um, the relationship as a whole, because they mm -hmm. always say that's like, that's the thing you have to get on the same page about. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, I, I told him that I was totally fine trying and, you know, I, but if it doesn't happen, it can't, I don't want it to be an issue in our relationship, you know, like let's stick together and explore their options and not push each other away type of mm -hmm. thing. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, 
<laughs> so yeah, we go to try and it happens on the first time. And I, <laughs> oh my God. I went through a lot of guilt with it though, because I have a lot of friends who, who still to this day struggle. are struggling to yeah. have babies. And here I was, I don't want a baby. I'm fine without them. I could, you know, don't like kids, blah, 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 blah. And it happens first time. And so I had, a, I went through a lot of guilt with that and had to talk those emotions out and things. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, a, it was weird. I still cannot believe I'm a parent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it, I definitely think that it, uh, how, how has Logan affected our relationship or between the two of us? I think I definitely look at her now stronger than ever, like mm-hmm. seeing what she goes through every night with Logan and what she did in the past when it was like sleepless nights and I had to be up for work the next day. And, you know, she would take him and like, she would handle that. Um, It definitely made me look at her in a much more powerful light, I guess you'd Mm -hmm. say. Um, And especially one of the biggest things is the things that we focus on with Logan or the things that we want Logan to be good at or to care about, or, you know, certain values, like we are, definitely lockstep on those. I think more so than anything, I've never felt more like a team than Mm. we do now. Um, Because you feel like, I mean, you definitely, when you're in a relationship, you feel like you have a teammate, but like when you're raising a kid together, it is, it is definitely, it's two on one. And if you guys aren't together and know what you guys are doing, then it's, it makes it a lot harder. Yeah. So I would say more so than anything, I felt like, I feel like we are a good team now than when we were before. Right. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Yeah. Okay. I want to get to one more question, but I just, you know, Stacey, you're just, you give such good answers and you've, (laughs) you've, you've given answers that we've just never gotten. And so I'm going to just hover on this a little bit more. You felt like you didn't want to be a parent and you said, you know, you, you just never, you didn't like babies, all that stuff. You, you have a baby. I mean, it's a pretty big life altering thing. Yeah. So what is that journey from the day Logan is born to now? Like, what's that arc? Um, I know that's like an impossible question. It's yeah. like, sum it up in a thousand words or less. Well, Logan can't hear. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so I, when I was pregnant, I had zero connection with Logan. Um, I just felt like I was growing this alien inside of me. Like I had, I did not have this, Oh, my baby bump. Like I love him. Like Mm -hmm. not at all. I did not feel that at all. And, um, even when he was born, I, I didn't, he, I, he, he didn't, he didn't come out of me and I'm sitting here like, I love you so much. It took me time to really feel a connection and love for this, person that was in front of me now, you know, it wasn't this instant. I love you. So, um, I mean, now I am a thousand percent so obsessed. I sit there creepishly watching him because he's just the cutest (laughs) little thing in the world. But, um, yeah, it's, I I think for me, I, I, I knew it would, I knew she would be obsessed with him once it came to, came to be, yeah, I've seen her. We have we have two dogs. I've got mine, and she's got her little dog. And she's she used to be obsessed with her little dog. I still am. You still are. <laughs> <laughs> but she used to be obsessed with the little dog. And I I always thought to myself, if she has half the amount of love that she has for that little dog for this baby, we're gonna be just fine. Mm. And, and now baby's number one, and Lucy's number two. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Lucy doesn't need to know that. Yeah, no. she, yeah. I mean, she's for her ears, for as much as as much as she wasn't connected in the beginning or like right during pregnancy or anything like that. Uh, I don't know when that shift happened, but I mean, she's obsessed with him now. Mm. <laughs> you cool. know, I, I love your honesty in that Stacy, because yeah. I think that the messaging that you're automatically, you know, hormonally or whatever, just so attached, like it just, it's instant. I always think of the movie waitress. Have you ever seen the movie waitress with Carrie? No. Uh-huh. Well, the whole movie she's pregnant and she hates that she's pregnant. She has no desire to have this baby. She's just like so upset about it. And the movie, you know, there's a love story. She's got professional challenges or whatever, but it's actually a phenomenal movie. But at the end of the movie is her, like she gives birth and she sees her baby and it's like, I'm in love with my baby. Like it's a happy ending because I see my baby and I'm in love with my baby. And I remember watching that and being like, 
well, I guess that's how it's supposed to be, you know, <laughs> like as a woman, you give birth and you're instantly like head over heels, like right. you're never going back. You're in love with your baby. And so I just think it's refreshing to hear a woman who's gone through all this just, you know, admit that. It, yeah, I think actually your case is pretty common. It's not. Hey. I think yeah. it's probably more yeah. common. And yeah, it's people just don't admit it. So yeah. really appreciate your honesty. Yep, me too. So final question about the two of you. Any beliefs about relationships that have changed now that you have this one? Well, the, the one we were talking about previously where going to bed <laughs> mad at each other is okay. Um, <laughs> um, That's a good one. Yeah. Um, I think one thing for me, I'm just thinking random ideas right now, but um I didn't know if when I was growing up, I was expecting to be with somebody that was as like fiery and passionate in life in general. Mm. Um, I don't know if I was expecting more of not, I don't want to say expecting, but <coughs> assuming I would end up with like more of like a vanilla person, I guess, <laughs> but she's far from that. And, and, and I don't, and I think it's a great thing because I, I really think it's somebody that is balanced me out. <laughs> And Sorry. has made it as made it, somebody that's very opposite of me. And so it has brought out different sides of me. Um, and I think, I think that's a, been a great, a, a great surprise, I mm. guess. Today. Yeah. I love that answer. How I'm understanding the question. So I, if you believe in something, I think you should give it your all. And like, you know, people have, have this like mentality of, you know, oh, he's not, he's not interested. Like, you know, he, he, you would know if he was interested. So just walk away. So, you know, you go through these dating, you go, you know, down the line dating and it's like, Oh, he isn't responding to your text message. Like just drop it type of thing. Mm -hmm. So for me, I feel like if you really believe in something and you feel it deep in your soul, don't just walk away because that's what people tell you to do. Like stand true to kind of what you believe in. Cause that all my friends were like, he is, shitty like look he's playing <laughs> he's playing you for these two years like you know but I knew what we had and so I stuck it out so I guess for me prior I would have always I, I was a very much like turn on my heels and leave kind of person and with him it was totally different and I played it differently in that sense and it worked out so I don't know if that really answered no I no, yeah. I actually think that's a great answer you know your that takeaway reminds me a bit of we had Ashley I and Jared on and Jared, the guy who you Jared. kicked the who shit you out punched. of. <laughs> <laughs> you tra do you train boxing in your, in your classes? Have, it's funny. I had never fought before that day. Wow. It, you're a natural. It, you really it, maybe missed your calling because, I mean, the guy, yeah, I think he almost died. <laughs> it, it, it helps that they put me in the ring with uh, with Jared, who's 100 pounds lighter than me. Yeah. Uh, Andy, that honestly, was, he I, didn't watch much I of that season, out. but he saw that episode. He's a diehard <laughs> boxing fan, <laughs> and he spent like honestly yeah. weeks talking about the two of you in that ring together he talks one. about it all the time yeah, because there's like day. there's like you know in big fights they negotiate for weeks they're like oh it's gonna be five pounds this way five yeah, like, pounds this way meanwhile you're like a full human heavier than well, him and you're just pummeling funny, the guys <laughs> what's funny and i'm not sure if you talked to anybody else about this but when we did that this was our first group date ever and when we were doing this and we were doing the training and what tanner was on my season also and he had uh, seen other other he was like our bachelor expert he knew what they were going to do and so we we're all you know doing our training sessions with Layla Ali and all these other people and he's like they're not going to make us fight they're going to make us do something stupid like <laughs> they're gonna it's gonna be a I dance battle or something <laughs> like that and then we get in the ring and I remember I don't know if they caught it on camera but the first time they put us into a ring and we like all of us were sitting at, on like the stage watching and we were assuming they would put two people in the ring and they would tell them something different. Like, okay, you guys are going to get in there and do a dance battle or something. Sure. And then the, the, the second the bell rang and they each started like wailing on each other, <laughs> all of us on stage looked at each other like, Oh, this is real. This is really happening. <laughs> oh my God. That's so that's sick. So nuts. What's so crazy is they take so many precautions legally and for health. And they're like, ah, just beat the shit out of each other. Exactly. That won't cause any problems. <laughs> Truly. Andy's been talking about the two of you in that ring together I, I for was, years. I was shocked. Totally shocked. Like that's the kind of thing, like in my gritty, disgusting boxing gym, I used to train at, which was like smelled like blood and guts. They would never let 
let that happen. I know. I know. I, 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 I legitimately <laughs> remember before I got in the ring with Jared that final time, I remember talking to somebody. I can't remember if it was a producer, but I remember, is he okay to go in the ring? Are we good here? And I remember thinking, <laughs> oh yeah, he's cleared. <laughs> I remember thinking, and I don't know if this was good or not, but I remember thinking, I'm just going to try and end this quick because <laughs> I really, I, I feel bad. Like I don't want to. I don't want him to go through this. <laughs> and it ended quick. It's good to hear you're so merciful. <laughs> like my dad would always say, one or two hits, I hit you, you hit the ground. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I no, I I knew that every one of my football buddies would be watching that show and be like, if Jared knocked you out, I would they never would hear never. That well, that's the thing. If this was like in a backyard, it was just like a barbecue or something, you know, yeah. maybe it'd be different. But you had all the pressure of vying for a woman and on national TV. Exactly. And you're a personal trainer. Like yeah. what happened? Yeah. As you said, what happens if you get beat? Or even it's a draw. Exactly. You had to kill him. <laughs> it was your duty. Anyway, yeah, exactly. I'll never stop talking about yeah, you'll that. Ne- he literally will never stop talking. But we talked about it with Jared when they yeah. we had the I almost and wrote like a, like a letter to that, you know, <laughs> Michael Flights. I was like, dear Michael. <laughs> no, but, but even, I mean, day in, day out, every single time they air The, bach- the Bachelorette, they always have one group date where they're like, yeah, we're going to put these massive dudes together and we're going to do a pillow fight and it's going to go great. Yeah. No. It's not gonna no, go no. They're going to throw the pillows and start fist fighting. Like yes. that's what happens. Yeah, yes. uh, it's poor judgment. Yeah. But uh, that was a delightful TV, change. I'm so glad the fight came up. Actually, that was sort of accidental. Yeah. But to to rewind, <laughs> Stacy, your answer reminds me a bit of Ashley Ice Take because you know everyone was like, ah, you know, he's never going to be with you. Blah blah blah. I do think a crucial piece of this puzzle was how you almost changed tactics or like you moved on with your life in a way. I do think that that does play a role in all this. But uh, I I agree. You know, I think that there's, you know, the saying when you know, when a guy is into you, you'll know it. I think that is f- true for the most part. But I think sometimes a guy needs a nudge or yeah, a reminder sure. or maybe yeah. needs to see you walking out the door to realize it and sure. all that. It's healthy. <laughs> well, and I think also, like, with all that, he he never was like, I'm not into you. He yeah. was never, you know, he never made me feel anything like that. He, he would always say, I, I really like, I love this. I like this. Um, I'm just not ready, you know? Yeah. And, you know, of course, what my friends hear is, oh, he's just stringing you along to like get what Which you want. And true like, sometimes. And sure. Exactly. A hundred percent. But I think it was just different. You know, I, it's, it really is something I can't put words on. It was just different. I knew what we had. And I think, I think ultimately he knew he was just so clouded by other things. Mm -hmm. Um, because when we were together, it was like nothing else mattered, you know, Mm -hmm. and we just had a blast and it was, yeah. So it it is, it it was different. And that was why I stuck it out. So what, what a delight you are to talk to. It is now time for the dear Shandy newlyweds game. Yay. Very business-like answer writing over there. (laughs) Confidence. A lot of confidence. Yes. Some excitement. When we would say the question, there was like a, ha. And then they would turn away from each other and write with stern expression. This is going to be a high scoring game. (laughs) Yes. I I, I sensed a lot of confidence. I'm I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go four, three, Stacy. Okay, Andy likes to predict, and yeah. he predicts, Stacey, you will win 4-3. Can, can I put bets on that, too? Sure. <laughs> you can, we can have a side bet, yeah. Can I go 4-3, Stacey, also? <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> okay, so Stacy, as our guest of honor, not that you're not our guest of honor, Ben, but, you know, our, our civilian here. Yeah, a commoner, a commoner. The commoner. Yeah. Uh, Stacey, we're going to start with you, which means that, Ben, you're up for this point first, Okay. Okay. So Stacy, question number one, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? My favorite ice cream flavor is boring vanilla. Ooh. Nice. <laughs> I mean, you can't go wrong with vanilla. Ben, did you get that? It says double vanilla. Double, double oh, vanilla. Oh, nice. He wrote Stacy at the bottom. That's oh. <laughs> in case he forgot. That's cute. <laughs> he, ben, you get that point. Wow. Double yeah. vanilla. 
Nice. You know what's funny is you thought you would end up with a vanilla woman. I and know. She loves yeah, vanilla and the only thing cream. vanilla is the ice cream. <laughs> yeah. You know, classic vanilla. It's a good flavor. Right. I mean, that's perfect. it's the original flavor. That was probably the first ice cream flavor. Wait, is vanilla the original ice cream? I mean, cream? when someone first made ice cream, I bet it was vanilla. Had to be. It had to be. Yeah. Okay, Ben, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? I said chocolate chip cookie dough. Oh, he I wrote mean, his name at the bottom. This is amazing, yeah. <laughs> and I said... We might have to, like, screenshot Oh, the- cookie dough. Wow. <laughs> wow. Stacy. Wow, you guys are nailing this so far. Damn. Okay, wow. Nice. You know what this says is that you're both very steadfast in your ice cream preferences. Yeah. 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 Which you should be. You should be. I think. It's a common thing in this household. We have a problem. We do. <laughs> <laughs> we like I our sweet. That. There are worse problems. <laughs> yes. Okay, Stacy. Question number two: What is your biggest peeve about Ben? Too messy. Too messy. Oh. oh okay, Ben. Did you get that? I said how me- how messy I can be. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a period at the end of it. He's got like proper <laughs> punctuation. It's, I, I have to say it's very orderly in a German fashion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> ben, you got that point. Uh, wow. Chocolate chip, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's cookie dough. Sorry, I really forgot. <laughs> okay, Ben, what is your biggest peeve about Stacey? I know what this one is. Uh, it is similar. It is how OCD she is about cleaning. With oh, an exclamation with mark. With an exclamation point. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that he turned his peeve yeah, against her. It, yeah, wow. That was yeah, nice. Balance. Balance. I think he already knew that one, though, huh? Because yeah. I got it right, too. I'm too <laughs> wow. clean. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm like a little floored right now by these. It's so in sync. Well, he... <laughs> he it was. It's always... <laughs> It's always a fight with us. When- okay. That's probably what we fight about the most. Yeah. yeah. It's it's mostly what, I mean, up until we got married and started fighting about more complex things. <laughs> um, I, every girlfriend I ever had was about the messy clean thing. I was the clean guy and they yeah, were always- Yeah, Andy's oh. very fastidious. Yeah. He, I everything love that. has its place. Yeah. I usually find men are usually the clean ones in relationships. Oh, and really? They're the dirty. Yeah, I, I, that's my experience. I don't experience. know if that's true. No? Yeah. <sighs> I don't know if that's true, but maybe, I mean, maybe you're right in your experience. I always joke and say he's like a snake. He sheds his skin. I can tell from the second he gets up in the morning where he has been and what he has been. <laughs> Wait, let's, let's be clear. I'm not dirty. I'm just no, messy. Right. messy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The I big difference. Not, like she will, is OCD about putting things exactly where they need to be and nothing can sit out. Like, Yeah. When he's clean, I've like cleaned up all, like, even if he's still using it, it's clean. I, will, and I will use a cutting board. I will turn around to do something on the stove and turn around. She'll be cleaning the cutting board that I will use. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. Okay, you need to leave the kitchen. This is my zone. Get out. <laughs> Yes. I'm wondering where the truth lies, like where the proper cleanliness is. It's somewhere it's prob- in between. It's probably it's right be. here, like halfway. Yeah, right. yeah, right. Yeah. Between, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you guys are killing yeah, this point. so far. Two, two. Wow. Question number three, Stacy. What is the first thing you would buy if you won the lottery? Ben knows this. Oh, yeah. A house. Very nice. Nice. That's the number one family yeah. feud answer. Yeah. Yep. Oh, house. He got it. He got it. Stacy, what it. were you saying? Oh, I mean, it's impossible to buy a house in, in Silicon Valley yeah. right now. So, I mean, oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Just unreal. All the damn tech it's people. the dream, right? Yeah. yeah. I want to buy a house too. Yeah. <laughs> I want to buy it. Everyone wants a house. Yeah. I think that's a very practical. Practical. Lotto, it's yeah. a practical lotto winning. Yes, absolutely. Pick. I agree. All right, Ben. I'm curious to know if it's the same thing. Oh, he also wrote a house. Stacy, <laughs> did you get that? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys are so on wow. the same page. How oh, cute. this is too easy. This is too easy. We should have gone harder on you with our questions. <laughs> I mean, we talk a lot. I feel like we are it, always. It does, it does help that the lotto was yesterday. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> true. True. All right. Question number four. You know who they're reminding me so far of is Kevin and Astrid. Totally. You guys are really giving us Kevin Astrid vibes. Yeah. Like yeah. they were so. Yeah, the I two of that. them were so in sync. It's like they had talked about exactly what they would buy if they won yeah. the lottery. It was very yeah. exact. Obvious question. Yeah. Okay. So, Stacy, when you were a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? I'm interested to see if I get this one. Yeah, right. I am too. You guys are going to laugh. 
I wanted to be a truck driver. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh no my god, he got way. it! Oh god. Okay, that deserves applause. Wow. That's, that that's is slow. Oh, no, that slow. oh, sorry. It's a slow clap that accelerates. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That I mean that was just oh magnificent. No, that's wow, Ben. I, I that's sure I incredible. <laughs> how is that four. like uh, that's a whole love fest in itself, how that happened. Yeah, can you so can we hear a little more about your desire to become a truck driver? Yeah. I have always loved driving. Like I loved golf carts. I wanted to any, I would drive a school bus. I, my uncle would used to let me sit on his lap and drive the truck and you know, his truck, or when we would rent motor homes to like go on little, you know, cross country, whatever, he'd let me drive the motor home. I sit on his lap and drive it. And I just, I loved driving. I don't know why I, yeah, wow. but I wanted to be a truck driver. I, I mean, there's still time. You know? There's still time. I could do another <laughs> career switch. Yeah. So was it the truck specifically? Because you could also drive, I don't know. Don't question her desires. No, I'm just curious. Like if as a child, she also loved large. You could have been a race car vehicles. driver. Yeah. I, I guess so a race question. car driver was another. I love speed. And yeah, I think that okay. a race a race car driver could have been another. But um, I mean, all these people do is drive and they like sleep in the back of their little van things like these yeah. truck drivers are i don't know it's just so yeah, driving. i know i don't know why it was my <laughs> i mean look the country needs truck drivers yeah. right now they do. so they do. they do sign me up they also need dental hygienists though. that's true yeah yes so you're, you're you're into your good no matter what <laughs> 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 all right so ben when you were a child what did you want to be when you grew up so this is the first thing that i can remember wanting to be it was a tiger trainer <laughs> <laughs> My, I just can't get over that you are writing your own name down it's on amazing. your own answers. Well, you know, you gotta get, that's going to be a post. Stay organized. See, organization is probably one of my worst qualities. And so I try really hard when I need to. <laughs> it's very cute. Yeah. Tiger trainer. Yeah. So not a lion trainer. Well, Tiger. It's, it's the whole thing. He'd probably train lions. I too. could do the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So any dangerous animal. So you'd want to work in like a circus? Oh, yeah. oh I guess in a zoo. Yeah, I could do a zoo did, or did a you think that far? I don't think he thought it through that far. I, think <laughs> I, 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 I was probably base. five at the time. So yeah, yeah. he wasn't thinking about his 401k as a time. <laughs> Stacy, I am dying to know if you got that. Um, I don't know. We're gonna have to talk about this. So I said a zookeeper. A zoo oh, interesting. Animals. Parallel. I think Hello? she gets that. I don't know. Oh, and, okay, well, we're gonna have to discuss. I mean, work with animals. Like he even said it could have been a lion. Well, now, now I have to be honest here. Um, when you say zookeeper, do you, did you say that because he just likes animals or did you specifically think he would be a zookeeper for the big animals, the dangerous <laughs> At the animals? time it was specifically big cats. Okay, so is that, be so honest. Mine's very broad, I feel like. I feel like she gets where that. Where did you get that idea from? Where where did that originate? Your, your feeling that he wanted <laughs> to be a zookeeper? Yeah. Answer. No, why did you think? Why did you say zookeeper? What was the impetus? Because I feel like I remember. Because we had joked before. Because in my little preschool, you know how in preschool they do a little graduation. Yeah. So in mine, I walked across and I said, "I want to be a zookeeper," and that was another one of my things that I wanted to be. And I felt like I remember him saying something like, "Oh yeah, like I wanted to do Got zookeeper yeah. too." And so that's just what stuck in my head. You but know what I'm gonna? You know what I'm gonna say here? And this is a credit to you guys. I think because they're doing so well, I'm not gonna give her credit. What? For that. It's horrible. You're gonna punish them for doing well. Um, no, I'm 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 Look. giving them I'm rewarding them with with great fairness in the game. <laughs> I think she deserves the point because she didn't write police officer. Mm. She clearly like they she was hovering on the answer. And he even said it was like, okay, a lion, like yeah, but tiger. a big cat trainer is totally different from a zookeeper, but a zookeeper doesn't train big yeah, cats. She they just wrote feed in brackets them. works with animals. I, she gets okay. the point. All right. I, like, I'm on, on the fence there. That's yeah. true. She hey, did hey. say the work with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good head. I, she gets that All right. point. Okay. All right. Okay. I'll take it. What's, I the feel best, like... what's the best somebody's done in this game? Five. Well, you guys are killing this. We have gotten fives, oh, but we've good. never gotten a five. We've never five. gotten a five five. So oh, if you get your question number five, then we're gonna oh. need a tiebreaker unless you want to be tied okay. at five. This is an un five five will be unprecedented. Yes. Okay. And we've done a lot of these. No pressure. Okay. Pressure. Stacy. 
Question number five. It's your last meal on earth. What do you order? And the two of you agreed it would be, I love this, two food items and one drink item. This is going to break them. Oh, you think it's going to break? Yeah, yeah. Ooh, Someone's going to get this wrong. Oh. So, we, so, yeah, so Ben is a foodie. We, talk, we do food a I, lot. I'm a so. Okay, so okay. for me, I would do a really good cheeseburger. Good is huge. A good cheeseburger. Good. Um, I would do anything with vodka and okay. mac and cheese. Okay. I love Now, that. now uh, are we going to accept anything with vodka? It's a little broad because most drinks are vodka. Yeah, but she's answering for herself. Yeah, but so I you can't tell her her answer is wrong for herself. No, no, no. But I'm saying that. Well, she might be screwing. You're basically him. you're giving Ben an opening here. Yeah. Well, let's see. I mean, let's see what he wrote. Okay, yeah, okay. I'll get anything with vodka. Okay, so I said a cheeseburger with wow. fries, wow. and okay. then drink anything. What? With fries. My <laughs> God! But she won't finish it. But I won't. <laughs> oh my God! And it was the requirement was two out of two three. Out of three. He got it. Oh wow. my! Unbelievable. God. Oh my Anything with vodka. Wow. And she won't Anything finish the drink with vodka. Yeah. So exactly the same wording. It. Yeah. <laughs> This is, this is, this is an amazingly weird. good relationship. <laughs> but food is like our thing. Like anytime, like it, he is such a big foodie. It's a big topic in our household. It is. So I could pretty much order for him. If like when we go out to dinner, we always will say, okay, if I was going to order, what would yeah, I get? Yeah, we actually do we, do that. We play that game. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, wait, I wait, wait. You'd say if you have to guess what the other person would order? Yeah. So we, we sit down, okay, oh. what would I get on this menu? And then we also do games like when we're at like Costco, we try to see who's going to get the total, who's going to get closest to the total. Oh, we should have given you guys harder yeah, questions. Yeah, this is like playing <laughs> Trivial Pursuit with like a Jeopardy champion. <laughs> He's like, oh, I've never played Trivia or Pursuit, but I was a champion on Jeopardy for 17 weeks. Yeah, wow. I'm okay. That's yeah, you guys well, are next level. That's really impressive. We're gonna have to go tie. I do feel like we can order for each other, but we don't play that game. But I have a feeling we may be adopting that game. Yeah, it's really fun. That's a it good is, game. It is fun. I like that game. Too. All right. Well, we're all on pins and needles. Yeah. Ben, it's your last meal on earth. The foodie's last meal on earth. What are the two food items and one drink item he orders? Last meal on earth is surprisingly simple, but just good home bone in ribeye with truffle fries and an old fashioned. Oh, there, there we go. Oh, an old uh, fashioned. Ben. Okay. Yeah. Said right. by Ben. <laughs> are the winners. <laughs> Let's see. Play? Oh my God. Did you get that? Oh play? man. Bone in ribeye, what? old fashioned and French fries. Oh my God. This, nice is, job, <laughs> this is insane. I mean, five, five. Wow. You, that's this on, is a really that's, big deal. Not, no one's ever done this. And sometimes Ew. when people get a five, it's because we have a lot of tiebreakers. So someone eventually reaches five with like seven questions kind of thing. Oh. I'm floored. Okay. Well, so- the, uh, the reason I said four threes was I knew you guys were going to do well. And I thought four three was very, very good. well. Yeah. But this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. <laughs> this is, I we're floored by this. We've never had a score like this. We wouldn't get this. I, there's no way we would get five, five, you and me. I have a feeling we would end up circling around each other. Yeah. And I think you would have a really hard time with my favorite ice cream flavor. Oh, yeah. She's like, favorite ice cream flavor is cold and filled with cream and sugar. That's her favorite ice cream flavor. That one, uh, that one was tough, actually. I I, for a, I went like, I almost went chocolate chip on there. I almost went mint chip. And then I, I settled that vanilla. So that, so was, that, was, the, that was the one that, that could have broken you. One, believe wow. it. I love that there's a recap happening, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, my favorite flavor, by the way, is ooey gooey butter cake okay. from Ample from, Hills. I know. That's what yeah. I would have guessed. Okay, just so I don't swear, forget I it in case that. we ever play. <laughs> All right. So this is now, it's up to you guys. Do you want to go down in history as the only newlyweds game couple to get 5-5 five, no, five on the first no, five questions? Or are you so no, competitive that one of you wants to they get six win. and you want a tiebreaker? Oh, uh, we're going for it. Yeah, yeah. No, they're not. Are you kidding me? Come on. All right. Do you know these people? I'm very excited. (sighs) On the edge of my seat, question number six, our tiebreaker. This is unprecedented territory. Yep. yep. (laughs) Stacy. So, Ben, this is your point. Stacy, what was your first ever job, meaning the first thing you ever got paid money to do? I wrote for the San Leandro Times. I wrote articles. For our local oh. newspaper. Oh my oh, that's god! So cool. How how old were you? I was in. I was like at. I want to say ninth grade. That's oh, cute. Wow. 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 For that. Yeah. Is that a good paper? <laughs> 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 uh, 
um yeah no it was it was I wrote like on our like oh no it was our junior I remember my first one it made the front lines it was um about junior prom oh wow and our picture was on the very front of the San Leandro Times and you got paid for that and I got paid that's wow. crazy you that's got paid cool. to write when you were ninth grade it was like 20 bucks an article or yeah, something but still wow. that's crazy cool yeah. like reading the San Leandro Times you're like this is like written by like a 12 year old <laughs> <laughs> crappy newspaper <laughs> <laughs> All right, Ben, did you get that? No, I don't think I got this. Oh, he said she worked oh. at a pizza place. He said yeah, she worked, worked at a pizza favorite. place. What pizza place? She worked at a pizza place down the street from her house. Yeah, um, it was called Wait. Pizza. But that was so, what what age was that? Oh gosh, I was it was like I was in my like early twenties. Oh. Ooh. Yeah. That's a that's a that's a that's clear a zero. Clear zero. Yeah. yeah. See, that's Here's not zero. zookeeper. No. That, that he no, wasn't, that's, he that's wasn't hovering on the clear zero. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we'll see what happens now. Stacy. Okay. This, this is your point to lose. Do now. we go to double overtime, yeah. <laughs> or is it over right here? <laughs> so I said, for my first ever job that I got paid for was as a kid. I got paid <gasps> to cover and uncover the pool, uh, our neighborhood pool. Wow. wow, oh, she's That's celebrating over. Let's job, see. Let's see, Stacey. <laughs> That's it. It's over. Okay. So, well, okay. So I put first. Well, she put two. So No, no, no. But I put a star. Count. See, look, I put a star by the one that I was going to go for. Yeah. Well, so, well, you could have said the star was for the one you weren't going to go for. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? Technically speaking. So, you know, it, okay, we'll give it to her. She got this. She got so, it. First job. first job was to open the pool in the morning. But I didn't know if he got paid for that. Hey, That's but, why I was oh, like. You got it. You got it. That's crazy. Six. Ballet. That's a really things. strange volunteer job. But yeah, okay. This is it. You guys, That's it. I, was, Stace, I, mean, I have oh, to do it. Stacy, you are the winner of the Dear Shandy Newlyweds game. Woo! <laughs> Very solid. With the win. highest ever score of six. Amazing. Six with a tiebreaker. Six. That's bonkers. You guys, you killed that. Yeah. Killed. You're all. They're all winners here. This is a, this is an example of all winners. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And you love each other so much. We raised Sorry? the bar. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you did raise the bar. Yeah. Seriously, you guys. Thank you so very much for joining yeah, us. We had a great. delightful time with you, and and we will set you free. Go tend to your sleeping baby and your dogs, and we really hope to cross paths with you one day. Yes, yeah. this was so much fun. Thank awesome. you so much for having us. Yeah. Thank you thank for you. joining us. Okay, have a great night. Thanks. Thank you guys right. too. Bye guys. Bye. 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 Oh, wow. Solid love fest. Solid. You know, I love it when that happens because I didn't know what to expect. I'm gonna be honest. I never know. I didn't know what to expect. I never know. Yeah. Sometimes a couple just comes on and like I want to hang out with them. Yeah. I want to go on, on a agree. double date. I agree. Yeah. It's the ease in the relationship mm -hmm. that can talk about things that are difficult yes. without any issue. I love that she went there. She was like, yeah, he was dancing too close with a girl and I wasn't into that. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he lied about it. like it was so brutally honest. And she's like, I didn't think I wanted to be a mother. Like these things are just so relatable yeah. and so honest. And he's so honest too. Like, I love how she was like, we wanted this magical hike. He's like, well, a hike is where I always take first time. <laughs> <laughs> You're not special. Yeah. They just don't usually last six hours. Yeah. They were so great. Yeah. What a great match. They and it are. showed in the newlyweds game. Mm -hmm. It reminded me a lot of Astrid and Kevin, honestly, just did, the way yeah. the answers. I, this is why I think that they would beat us. Like, I don't think we would score no. like this. Cause I think we would be a little more like, like Ashley and Steve. Yeah. Or another example is Leslie Murphy and Alex Kavanaugh. No, no. <laughs> no, just where the answers are kind of like, yeah, they're two ships in the night. We you know think I mean? too much. There'd be too much overthinking of the answers. Yeah, but what's so interesting is like they're clearly like deep thinkers. It's yeah. just that they're like, yeah, you got you got vanilla. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's great. I mean, yeah. that's just the whole thing. Just, I'm, I'm very pleased. Very it's pleased. A pleasing love fest. I don't even know what to say more. Nothing. I think oh. they got it. They got it like a nine-hour love fest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do quickly want to touch on how they got together because that was interesting. The two years where they're friends, yeah. But then you know they admitted they, there was some hooking up going on. I, you know, I think that she played her cards right in the end there. Yes. Because he went on Paradise and she, she was, let him go. She yes, she set him free in her mind. If you love someone, set them free. <laughs> and he was he realized that 
you know, I, I'm telling you when she's not responding to his text, she's not as readily available. I'm not saying that you should play games, but in that case, he already knew it's what not she a was, game. what he could have. It's not a game. It's just the right thing to do because human <laughs> nature is like, I want to be free. I want to do what I want to do. Mm-hmm. Just let humans do what they're going to do because they will come back to you if that's the if choice. If it's right. Yeah. yeah. I also appreciate even the honesty around him being like, I'm not ready. Like there, I feel like a lot of his unreadiness the the bachelor played a role i kind of wish we talked about this but we talked about so much stuff it was like hard to even pick what to talk about because i had so many questions for them but i remember feeling that way when my season was airing like i wanted to be single like i wanted to experience of course yeah like i remember right after my season wrapped filming i got right back together with my ex but when it started airing i we broke up again yeah because i was like i don't you know, we broke up for a reason in the first place. You know, I respect the honesty in that, like, you know, he wanted to do the single thing while his season was airing. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's sort of like you get it out of your system. You know, it, To me, it'd be strange if he didn't, yeah. honestly. Yeah. I ruined it for you. You wanted to do that. Huh? And I screwed it up. What are you talking about? I screwed up your single time. <laughs> I mean, I had like two months. Yeah, that's good. You, you did some work. <laughs> I just there. liked you that much. Mm, you did screw sorry. it up. I wish I met sorry, you a I'm little so bit lovable. later. Yeah, yeah so I lovable. You up. <laughs> Wait, so is this a roundabout way of patting yourself on the back? <laughs> oh, they were just delightful. Yeah. I, I don't think I have any further comment. No. It like speaks for I think itself. It speaks for itself. What mm-hmm. do we have to say? Nothing. That could add to what, that. What, yes. Nothing. What just shut up. What wisdom could we Both possibly have? Shut, shut up. up? <laughs> Okay. If you enjoyed what you heard today, you know what we will ask of you, and that is to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow us on Instagram and TikTok, leave us Apple and Spotify podcast ratings and reviews, and do all the things you would do to support a little baby podcast. We're still a baby. (laughs) Are we? It's like The Simpsons, where the baby stays a baby forever. (laughs) Or really any cartoon show. True. We're a toddler. Yeah, toddler. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye-bye. Dear Shandy.